When I was um, at the Hillel House at the University of Arizona, I won't tell you how long ago that was, <laughs> we would gather on Friday nights to have a student-led Friday night service followed by Shabbat dinner. It was a great way to form a community with the other Jewish students, and it was also a way to separate from the work week of student life, taking a break from our studies. Of course, sometimes we'd go out to the movies after Shabbat dinner. I'm not saying I was fully Shabbat observant, but we did mark the weekly day of rest almost every week with these Friday night rituals. And perhaps once a month, we would also gather on Saturday mornings for a service, reading the Torah and having lunch. The prayer book that we used for Friday nights had some creative readings in addition to the traditional prayers. And a few of those creative readings continue to be favorites of mine. One of these was written by a man named Asher V. Hirsch Ginsburg. Ginsburg lived from 1856 to 1927. He was not a particularly religious Jew, but he was immersed in Jewish literature and culture. In fact, he's considered to be the founder of what became called cultural Zionism. He believed that the Jews needed their own state in which they were the majority of the population in order for Jewish culture to fully thrive and flourish. But he is more popularly called by his pen name, which was Achad Ha'am, one of the people. I gave you this background about him so that we can better appreciate the quotation that I like in the prayer book. Here's what he wrote. A Jew who feels a real tie with the life of our people throughout the generations will find it utterly impossible to think of the existence of the Jew without the Shabbat. One can say without exaggeration that more than the Jew has kept the Shabbat, the Shabbat has kept the Jew. The first thing to note about this remarkable statement is that Achad Ha'am was not a religious Jew. He may not have observed the Sabbath in all of its particulars any more than my friends and I did in college, yet he was keenly aware of the crucial importance of recognizing the Sabbath for the preservation of the Jewish people and Jewish culture. More than just keeping the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept the Jewish people alive with our own distinctive identity and close-knit community. It's no wonder then that in this morning's Torah portion, Kedoshim, right after God says, Kedoshim tihiyu ki kedosh ani Adonai lohechem, you shall be holy because I, the Eternal One, your God, am holy, right after God says that, he then begins with two specific commandments. Revere your mother and father and keep my Sabbaths. Yes, the Torah portion goes on to list dozens of other commandments, many of which are profound ethical principles, including perhaps the most important one, love your neighbor as yourself. But God doesn't lead off with that commandment. God begins with revere your parents and keep the Sabbath. I'll leave the discussion about parents for another day because this morning I want to focus on why God chose the Sabbath to be one of these two headliners for the Torah portion that commands us to behave in a way that is holy. And let me be clear about that last statement. When God says, you shall be holy, that is not a statement of fact. That is not God saying, yeah, you're definitely going to be a holy people, man. There is nothing inherently holy about the Israelites. In fact, reading the Torah you can see that they do not live up to that description. They do not rise to the challenge. This is not a prediction God makes about our future. You'll surely be a holy people. Rather, it is a command. This is the drill sergeant barking an order. You shall be holy. Or perhaps it's a loving parent trying to offer sage advice. Do these things that I'm telling you to do, and you will live a holy life, a good life, a life that honors and respects your Creator and cares for all of God's creation. What does it mean to be holy? First and foremost, modern Bible scholars tell us to be holy is to be set apart from the ordinary, 
to be different. But since God is the ultimate in holiness, the term also implies an elevated status. Our Eitz Chaim commentary suggests that to be holy is to partake in some measure of the special qualities of God. Holiness is the highest level of human behavior, human beings at their most godlike. So in what ways does the observance of Sabbath help us to become a holy people? First, of course, by doing our creative human work six days a week and then resting on the seventh day, we're imitating the description of God's creation of the universe in Genesis. God was busy doing God's creative activities for those first six days, and then he stopped on the Sabbath, and he said, wow, this is really good. On the Sabbath, God stopped, and it would seem he wanted to just enjoy the universe and take pleasure in its existence just the way it was. So too, we are to take God's gift to us, the created world, and through our own human creative efforts, hopefully turn it into something even better. Take the wheat and turn it into bread. Take the flax and turn it into cloth. Take the mud, turn it into bricks. Six days, God actually commands us to do this creative work. That is part of the commandment to observe the Sabbath. Six days you shall do your labor. And then, God says, we rest on the seventh day just to enjoy the world the way it is. We're to stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to manipulate it to suit our personal comforts. Just relax and enjoy. We are thus imitating the divine pattern, which is a kind of holiness. But more than that, in Genesis, God proclaimed that the Sabbath day itself was a holy day. God blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. And as Heschel famously pointed out, the first thing that is declared holy in the created universe is not an object. It's a moment in time, specifically the Sabbath day. Making the Sabbath distinct, separate from the rest of the week, and elevated in status is making the Sabbath a holy day. So when we recognize the Sabbath as a holy day every week, we are at the same time distinguishing ourselves and elevating our own lives and the spirit of our community. The more we do to recognize this weekly gift of holiness, the more our own lives will be enriched and the stronger our sense of community will be. And that is what Achad Ha'am was trying to say. Our keeping the Sabbath has preserved our sense of Jewish identity as a minority community in all of the countries of the diaspora. Now, obviously, much of this is not new to the people listening to me here or at home. After all, you all are observing the Sabbath by being here this morning. You recognize the value and meaning of observing the Sabbath, even if you also don't observe all the Sabbath in all of its particulars. But we all must admit that this past year, and a little more than a year, has been pretty challenging for us. For much of the year, most of us did not come to the synagogue on the Sabbath, even if we used to come fairly regularly. And coming to synagogue is one of the primary ways that we observe the Sabbath in our lives. Another very important aspect of observing the Sabbath are the rituals of Shabbat dinner at our homes, lighting candles, saying Kiddush over wine or grape juice, saying hamotzi over the challah, blessing our children, singing birkat hamazon, the grace after the meals. But the home ritual is made most special by inviting guests to your table or by being invited to someone else's table for Shabbat dinner. And that too has been shattered this past year. Some of us have developed patterns of Zooming a Shabbat dinner with family or friends just so that we're not so alone for this special evening ritual. But it's not the same as having guests at your table. It's not the same as seeing each other face to face and having a conversation that's not distorted by the internet. Studying a Jewish text on a Saturday afternoon is yet another Shabbat ritual. And while we can read a book by ourselves, the tra traditional Jewish method of study is having a partner. And this too has been interrupted by the pandemic. 
But again, some of us have decided to Zoom for a study group, again, to mark the Sabbath as a holy day, a special day. Even if some of us would not ordinarily have used electricity in this way on the Sabbath before the coronavirus. Looking ahead to the end of this summer, or maybe in the fall, when we finally feel safe to return to a more normal pattern of life, let's all consider ways that we will invigorate our Shabbat observance as well. We will be able to gather in large numbers again here in our synagogue. We'll be able to have kiddush lunches again, which will give us that invaluable opportunity to schmooze and catch up with each other's lives, share ideas, or just celebrate the day. We already can come to any service here, except on Friday night, without having to register in advance. And just seeing people here today and in person is so uplifting. That alone adds immeasurably to the holiness of the day. I look forward to the time that we can invite people to our home again for Shabbat dinner, hopefully this summer. We have many people who still have Shabbat at home alone on a Friday night in our community, and I'm hoping we can organize families to invite guests to their homes so that some of these people will have a place to go for Shabbat dinner. And perhaps we can continue to Zoom or FaceTime to study text together on a Saturday afternoon. If you want to do that, you can ask, your friend, ask a friend to join you. Find a text of interest to study together. I'd be happy to make suggestions if you would like some. And another thing that's developed among some people is Zooming for Havdalah, which is something we might also consider doing even after COVID is gone. It's a very short ceremony, but it's more fun to do it with others. And it's not always so convenient to drive to somebody's house for a few minutes service. But you can Zoom together and do it together for a few minutes, and this will add holiness to the end of the Sabbath day, even if we're using modern technology. These are some of the ways I hope we'll all consider doing to reinvigorate the holiness of the Shabbat in our post-pandemic world. The more we do to make the Sabbath holy, the more we will bring holiness into our lives and into our community. That same prayer book that we used in college also had this story, which you may have heard before. A great pianist was once asked by an ardent admirer, how do you handle the notes as well as you do? The artist answered the notes, I handle no better than many pianists. But the pauses between the notes, that's where the art resides. In great living as in great music, the story concludes, the art may be in the pauses. Surely one of the enduring contributions which Judaism has made to the art of living was the Sabbath, the pause between the notes. And it is to the Sabbath that we must look if we are to restore to our lives that sense of serenity and sanctity which Shabbat offers in such joyous abundance. You shall be holy, God commands us in this morning's Torah portion, and then he commands us to be holy by observing the holiness of Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>